So firstly, I'm going to switch off the boiler. And then I'm just going to remove this boxing in at the front of it, and then we can see what we're doing. So I've come to check the expansion vessel on this boiler, and when I press the Schroeder valve in, water's actually come out, which means that the, the expansion vessel is no longer working correctly because the diaphragm is passing. But that means that I can either buy a new expansion vessel for this particular boiler, which is about 60, 70 quid, and then it's got to be fitted. And it's not a job that I can do because you do have to take quite a few bits off the boiler in order to change it. So I consulted the guys in my forum, who were extremely helpful. And they've advised me to fit an external expansion vessel like this one. So I've bought the actual vessel itself that was about 20 quid. And I've also bought a, a mounting bracket to put it on. So basically this has got to go close to the boiler. And it goes on the central heating return pipe. And all we need to do is tee into that. So I'll just put the piece of rubber on there. Put the mounting bracket on and tighten that nut up. And then when we've done that and it's fixed to the wall, we've got a, a three quarter inch to 15 milli compression tap connector. And then that will just screw on the top of there. So we need to tee into the central heating return pipe, which is this pipe here. This particular pipe here, the 22 mil, is the floor. And then this one here is a return. The only problem is because it's so close to the wall, I can't actually get in there with a pipe slice to actually cut the pipe. So I need to tee into this pipe somehow with a 15 mil pipe. And that's where the actual filling loop connects there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this cap and then I'm gonna build some pipe work up to go along there down. And then the expansion vessel is gonna go in the corner of the kitchen. So if you haven't got a, a filling loop like that with a blanked off end, you're gonna to have to cut this return pipe somewhere and put a T piece in and actually tee off it. But before you do that, you do have to drain down the boiler, which we're gonna do next. Just to give you some idea of where the actual expansion vessel is gonna go. That's the boiler on the wall there. And then we've got a worktop and a washing machine. And then in that corner there, at the side of the draining board, is a space that's unused underneath. So I'm gonna put the expansion vessel down there then it's out of the way. So basically, all we need to do is fix this to the wall. We've already pressurized it to the correct pressure. And then we're just gonna connect that to the top of there and make sure it's nice and tight and doesn't leak. And then we're gonna have a 15 millimeter copper pipe coming out of there. It'll have a couple of bends in. And then we're gonna route it up and it's gonna go into that bit when we remove that cap. We've now located a drain off valve. So we're going to attach an hose pipe to the end of this and a Jubilee clip. So that's now nice and tight and then we need to run the hose pipe outside of the property. And then we're just going to undo the drain valve. Give that a couple of turns. And now we're going to open the bleed key on the upstairs radiators. And as you can hear, it's sucking the air through there now. So if we went to the hose pipe end now, the water will be flowing out of there from the system. So now we've still got the drain pipe attached to the bottom of the drain off valve and we're just going to open this valve now and as you can hear that was air escaping so it's actually sucking air in there now and it's taking the water out of the lowest level which is the drain point so now we can safely remove that cap and we can tee into that with our expansion vessel So the system's completely empty now, and if we open that, you can see that nothing at all comes out. So it's an ideal time now to put some inhibitor back in the system because we've drained it all out. So to make it easier, 
I'm going to put the inhibitor in before we fill the system back up. So I'm just going to grip hold of this. And I'm just going to undo this compression fitting. And I'm just going to turn the tap so that it's facing upwards. I'll actually open that ready. And then we'll just nip that back up again. It's a bit awkward here. Screw it back. And I'll just nip that back up. So now what I can do is I can connect a flexible coupling. Because normally this makes up the filling loop. So what I can do now is pour the inhibitor in there and it will go down there and it will go back into the return pipe for the boiler. So I've made sure that that valve's open there. And I'm just going to grip that using some kitchen towel. And that's the actual inhibitor that we bought. And I've actually decanted it into an empty or reduced container because it's easier to pour it out of this. Normally you'd use a funnel, but I haven't actually got a funnel, so I'm just going to pour it in there the best I can. So now we've done that, we can now close the valve because the inhibitor has now gone down into the system. So now we're just going to throw the containers away so nobody else can use them and we're going to give our hands a good wash. And now I'm going to position this bracket on the wall I'm going to fix it so that when the expansion vessel is on the bracket we have plenty of room to access underneath because that's where you recharge it from. So I can't actually get my camera down there because it is in a bit of an awkward position. So basically I'm going to fix the bracket to the wall and then I'm going to put the expansion vessel through the bracket and I'm going to tighten that nut down onto it so that it's tight. And then I'm going to use my 3 quarter inch to 15 mil compression tap connector and I'm going to screw that on there so that it's tight and then I'm going to come out of there with the copper 15 mil pipe and then I'm going to route it all the way up here and then I'm going to connect to that side of that filling loop. So I've now fit the external expansion vessel by teeing into this joint here. So we're now in the actual return pipe for the central heating. And whilst I've drained the system down, I've also fit a new filling loop on here. So I've now got a brand new filling loop there as well. So now what I need to do really is pressurise the system. And that's the actual tank in position there, which is in the corner of the kitchen. And it just tees up there and then it's connected to the boiler. So to, to fill the system now we need to use the two isolation valves, there's one there and one there. So I've cracked that one open. So when we open this one now the water will start going back into the system. So I've been round and I've closed all the bleed valves that I opened earlier. When you do this it's important to keep checking for leaks. You need to check the actual pipe work that you've put in to make sure it's not leaking and you also need to check the radiators that you bled to make sure that they're not leaking. It's essential that you go around and check them and make sure that the bleed valves are tight or else you're going to spit a lot of water out all over your carpet. So if we crack this valve open now 
you should hear the water start to go into the system. So we're just going to put it in slowly to begin with. And then we're just going to keep checking for leaks. The system's been refilled now to about 1.2 bar. I've checked for leaks everywhere and there's no leaks. So now all remains to be done is to actually check the boiler's working. So we're just going to switch the boiler back on now. So I've now got the power back on. And then really want to test the central heating. So we'll just press the override button. And the central heating has now come on. And we're just going to go around now and just check again for any leaks and make sure that none of the compression fittings that we've used are actually weeping because sometimes you do get a little bit of a weep coming from them and if that happens you have to tighten them up obviously. So I'll fill the system back up and it's now working. I've got the central heating switched on. It's at about one and a half bar and it's getting up to a nice temperature now and we're still no leaks. So that's it really. So now it's just a case of putting your boxing in back and then tidying up, which will probably take a couple of hours.